Um, yeah, actually, that's an interesting story in and of itself. Uh, I was at the uh, IMS uh, San Mateo uh, show, International Motorcycles Show at San Mateo. And uh, that was the first time we met, right? I was yeah. there with the, the Mission One, our prior model bike, uh, showing it off. And uh, yeah. David uh, approached me and said, hey, I want to I wanna get involved with this company. I want to I wanna help make... Uh, make the world safe for uh, electric vehicles and keep the enthusiasts uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keep the enthusiasts uh, needs met. I mean, Ed Edwards Edwards been with the company since the beginning, since it was you know three guys in a garage saying, "What the hell would happen if we put you know a bunch of batteries and a and a golf cart controller and a and a little motor electric motor into a into a Ducati 900 SS," you know, which is how the company got started three years ago, and then right. fast forward to the Mission One. And uh, when I saw that unveiled uh, it, it, at the at the TED conference, uh, I was living in New York at the time, and I just said that I want to I want to work on that because you know that is that is motorsports, that is uh, you know environmentalism, and that is technology all compiled into one concept, and that's what I love. Um, so basically. When we started, when we started the company, and uh, it's more like four years ago, I guess, um, four, four, and, four and some, uh, we thought it would be easy to find uh, motors and controllers and batteries and things like that, and we quickly found that the stuff, for example, for motors that were available were in the power range we wanted were, were enormous. Mm -hmm. uh, they were sort of industrial sort of motors and not really designed for a, a super lightweight, super high performance vehicle, uh, and similarly, uh, there were just no, there were no large format uh, batteries that we could just buy and put in the bike, and so we had to create our own battery packs. Um, fundamentally, you know, because there were no vehicles uh, like the one we were trying to build in the market, neither were there components available for those vehicles, and so, um, you know, we, we needed to make everything lightweight, energy dense, power dense, really compact so that we could get the kind of power and range that we wanted on the motorcycle, which is very space constrained. Right. Uh, and uh, weight is always at a premium. So those are the, those are the, 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 the problems we were trying to solve when we were developing our own components and software. Yeah, basically, um, so you know how motors can be used as a generator, um, like a hydroelectric dam or something like that, um, where you just kind of are running them, almost in effect running the motor, trying to run the motor against a force that's more powerful. So in this case, the road kind of going by sort of overpowers the motor and, and you you set the motor up so that 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 force going into the motor pushes the energy back into uh, the batteries and that's all done through the, the sophisticated software algorithm that can can articulate the the, the switches uh, that control the windings of the motor so that that happens. It's pretty yeah. great technology right there as well. But the cool thing is I mean what it what it net outs to in, in our motorcycles is, is a feeling that motorcyclists are very familiar with. You know, it feels a lot like engine braking. It can be dialed in to feel like, you know, different types of engine braking, whether it's that heavy pull of a twin or, you know, something a little less like an inline four. Um, you know, the goal with this motorcycle, again, is to sort of use the technology um, to the best advantage, but at the same time create familiarity uh, that motorcyclists, you know, already have with interacting with the machine. I forget who was who was telling me this. They were saying, "Man, it's amazing on these electric bikes. You know, you you uh, you you when you don't have your attention on shifting, on what gear you're in, on the clutch, on the RPMs, uh, blipping the throttle, blipping the throttle, <laughs> doing all that stuff. All of a sudden, you've got so much attention available to just focus on your your corner entry, your corner exit. You know, am I am I positioned right? You know, what are the tires doing?" And it's 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 you get to worry about all the stuff that uh, 
that uh, that that kind of contributes to you having fun as opposed to yeah. taking away. So it frees you up in other words, you, basically. Frees yeah. you up to just be be there with the bike and with the road. If you're if you're going around around town at uh, sort of standard uh, vehicle drive cycles, you could get to 150 miles on a charge. Um, if you are driving uh, a little more vigorously, you know you'll be somewhere between 80 and 120 miles on a charge. If you're pushing it really hard at a track, you'll you know, do between 20 and 40 miles. Uh, it takes about two hours to charge at a 240 volt quick charge station. Oh, that's pretty fast. Or eight at about a 110 volt station. Um, I think it, I think it would be com it would be pretty competitive. It would be certainly on paper we'd be in strong position to perform well against the the current uh, leaders in the in the field. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I would never make any claims that will blow everybody away. Uh, <laughs> um, that's uh, that's we're trying to build a bike that would be in position to do that. That's for sure. We, we have some conversations. Uh, we haven't finalized our ride yet. Okay. I don't get to hear names. Do no. I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? I don't know. It'd be, uh, it'd be in the hundreds. Yeah, there's, there's um, got to be probably, probably uh, somewhere between 300 and 1,000 different parts yeah, on there. So. What, what's interesting, though, about, you know, uh, being a you know being the R and D company and the powertrain focused company that we are, um, you know focusing on electric motorcycles instead of you know instead of designing our own car or something like that, you focus on on the powertrain, you focus on the chassis and the bodywork, and then you know the other components, the Brembos, the Marchesinis. I mean, you already know what's best. You have right. to dial them in for a vehicle of this weight, but you know the, those are known quantities. It's it's not sharply different. Obviously, this bike's a, a little a little on the heavier side than uh, than some race bikes. Um, but other than that, the weight balance is very uh, very conventional. Um, yeah. So the, so yeah. Brembo or Olins didn't have to design specific no, suspension no. components yeah, it's, for you it's, guys. Uh, we're using we're using their uh, their standard triple uh, zero forks and. Uh, and the standard TTX. Obviously, we have the the right sort of spring rates set up for the bike uh, and the rider. We have uh, we have tentative plans. Uh, basically, we are we would love to do the TTX GP full series, and uh, and that's that's what we're planning on doing. And we'd love to do uh, a handful of other kind of events and demonstrations. Uh, and we'll be finalizing that schedule in the next uh, few months. Yeah, okay. few weeks, I guess. Yeah, we're still, TTX GP hasn't come out with their official schedule yet, so we haven't been able to sort of give our official schedule yet, but we definitely want to be participating in as many of those as, as we can. Our plans for a production model are uh, not yet finalized, but we are definitely we're definitely interested in bringing a model to market uh, in the sort of 2012 kind of range. So. Yeah, it, it's an important thing for everybody in the company. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of interest uh, from people out there uh, for motorcycle like this. They contact us all the time. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's just getting getting a bike to market, that, that last 10% can be very challenging. Um, you know, getting it fully ready to be able to give to a customer uh, and have them use it, you know, safely and consistently every day. Um, but it's, you know, that's a challenge that we want to, that we want to take. But we we would never sell a motorcycle before it was really ready for that prime time. I mean, there's a lot of systems on board that are kind of just doing general monitoring uh, of the system, like what's happening inside of each of the batteries. Um, what's you know how warm is the motor? How what's the state of charge? What's the state of health of the batteries? Uh, kind of just continuously assessing and checking all the systems and subsystems of the bike. Um, also, there's uh, a system to 
transmit that data wirelessly uh, to uh, to uh, through through either Wi-Fi or three G system, uh, so that the bike can be remotely monitored um, over over the internet, for example, if if that's uh, what the user might be interested in doing. There's uh, you know the data acquisition system that not only tracks the electronic information but the position of the of the, uh, the you know compression of the forks, the compression of the rear shock, uh, uh, those kinds of things. We, uh, we haven't fully developed the system, but we'd like to get to a place where users could have, you know, if David was riding the bike one day and I were riding the bike the next day, if um, I could have my settings kind of uh, either, either sort of go with me, like maybe I'd have a special key or maybe I'd just select my name from a list and it would say, oh, you know, Edward's riding the bike today, therefore I'm going to set the throttle and the regen like this, so kind of a profiles system. So that's something that's still in that's development? That's a, it's a future, future development, yeah. Um, things that help the bike continue to, to feel, um, you know, exactly as you would want a bike like this to feel and to perform, but to manage the whole process more efficiently. So, you know, the biggest challenge right now, obviously, with, uh, with these bikes is the range. Uh, and, and so, you know, when you ride a motorcycle, an electric motorcycle hard, you drain the batteries very quickly. Um, so efficiently, efficiently managing those batteries with software so that you can get more time out of the same number of batteries is the best way to sort of increase range without increasing weight. So those are things that we'll be looking at very closely in the near future. The, the Mission R, we think, uh, represents sort of the, 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 right now, at least the pinnacle of what's possible in electric vehicles, uh, or in electric motorcycles. It's sort of the ultimate expression of electric performance. And uh, why we think that that's uh, important and compelling actually has to do with some of the, the nuances in your question about uh, what, what is the future of electric vehicles and its relationship to uh, a our environmental challenges uh, and we've long believed that if we can prove that electric powertrains are uh, are either equivalent or superior in performance in the most demanding environment which we think is uh, an electric motorcycle or just motorcycling in general um, that enthusiasts uh, and other uh, and, and other vehicle manufacturers would see that the tide has turned and that uh, low emissions and zero emissions vehicles, their time has really come and so it'll allow us to kind of enter a, uh, the next era of vehicles which will be uh, electric vehicles we believe. Just that, how, how exciting it's been for us to see how um, People are really receiving this bike. This is really, this is a this is a motorcycle. We're trying to make a motorcyclist's motorcycle. Like this is a a, a vehicle that will really excite enthusiasts and uh, longtime riders and new riders alike. And uh, we're just excited to be a part of an industry that is going through some amazing changes right now and and be at the forefront of it. And uh, thank you to your readers for. Uh, uh, helping to to, to uh, show their interest in this kind of uh, this kind of vehicle because you know we we know we're excited about it. Yeah, uh, you know it it was pretty amazing. Uh, two years ago at the Long Beach Motorcycle Show, the the Mission One was kind of received as sort of a curiosity, something sort of clever and you know, but just sort of a, a sideshow as it were. And 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 this year, you know, people with the Mission R. Uh, we're coming up and asking very intelligent questions about regenerative braking, about kilowatt hours, um, about performance. Um, people are starting to take this seriously. They're starting to understand what it's about. And uh, with, you know, in the more mainstream world, vehicles like the, the Chevy Volt and the Nissan Leaf uh, and some other uh, electric motorcycle manufacturers having products on the market, uh, you know, I'm sure that next year uh, it'll be even more so. And, and we're excited to um, we're excited to see that we're excited to be a part of that. As Edward said, you know, at the beginning we wanted to show what was possible with electric vehicle performance, so that uh, you know we could inspire consumers and we could inspire other vehicle manufacturers to do this. 
Um, now that's happening, and we're helping a lot of those vehicle manufacturers, which is great, uh, but we're not going to stop pushing the envelope.